Mr. Kotsias, uh, nowadays we've actually witnessed uh, a, an action in the Baltic with the Nord Stream 1 and 2, which has been sabotaged somehow. How does this reflect to the shipping industry and how the shipping industry will actually operate in order to facilitate the need for energy worldwide? The recent uh, news, flashing news actually, it's actually very alarming, I would say, that the Nord Stream 1 has been uh, punctured, uh, damaged in four different uh, locations. Of course, could indicate a sabotage, it could be anything else, but whatever it is, it could lead to this pipeline being totally inoperative. This is what we hear and we're very much alarmed because if this pipeline is totally inoperative and it will take a very, very long time until it's um, repaired, fixed and reactivated again, it gives us a one-way street of an alternative which is only transporting this gas by sea. It's a one-way, as I said again, uh, situation. There is no other alternative, cost effective of course, and to be able to uh, cater for the quantities needed. This is something of course that uh, shipping uh, is there to accommodate, is already there, will be there. Is it actually ready to accommodate those needs? Is it prepared to actually transfer all those uh, fuel uh, quantities to actually cover and cater for the needs? This is, this is a good question, of course, because uh, we knew the demand up to now and we were actually placing orders or um, owners were placing orders for new buildings, uh, basis of contracts, which we knew, and quantities that we knew. Now we're switching, uh, we're switching. I mean, this is another, I, I, I will say something which is quite important. We're moving back to coal moving back to coal as a, a possible energy source. So transition that we had from coal to gas, now we see the reversal of this. We're seeing moving from gas again back to coal. So um, yes, we will be needing less quantities of gas because we're switching to coal, but at the same time, the gas required has to be supplied by sea and have to, we have to find the, um, um, maybe extend the production I don't know if that's feasible or possible. I'm not an engineer and I'm not in the production business. I'm in the shipping business. I know how to transport uh, commodities, but I don't know how to produce these commodities. So definitely we're facing a challenge. Um, demand will not drop to zero. It will drop, of course. And we're having a transition period, which is uh, very, very interesting and challenging. I believe that uh, geopolitical today uh, disruptions are more than ever very visible. Is the Greek shipping industry ready to actually cater for all those needs? Greece has in the LNG 23.5% of the total carrying capacity. So we're about one-fifth of this uh, transportation uh, industry. So definitely, yes, we are there. And I think we're there to also um, move into this challenging field in terms of capital investments. A new building today, of course, will take three, four, five years. You see that all new building slots are actually occupied with container ships and uh, other ships. So uh, an order today for an LNG carrier or an FSRU, which will be needed because we'll be needing storage units, it's something that will not come today. But definitely, operationally wise, the Greek owners of uh, gas carriers are there and they hold a big majority.